Hey guys. Y'all think that's me right there? That's not me. Look at that uh, minivan. Looks identical like mine. Oh my goodness. <laughs> ah, look at that. Same color and everything. Oh, I was tickled to death when I saw that. I said, I know. Look at that. What's up, FOA squad? I'm Anthony, and welcome to our channel, Life with Anthony. I hope you guys are doing well out there. Happy Tuesday to you guys. I am in Baltimore right now. I got here last night around 10.30 p.m. I finished watching the Monday Night Football game, and then I went right to sleep. I got up this morning, and I went to grocery shop for what I'm responsible for for this Thanksgiving meal, and I'll show you guys what I got uh, in a few minutes. But first, I want to start this video off by saying I have too much food in this house. I mean, sometimes I think I have the mentality of I live in an apartment or a regular home and I have this huge refrigerator and I go grocery shopping and I buy way too much and I'm not cooking it fast enough. Especially when I have in the past four days or so, been trying to focus on portion eating, cooking just one serving meals so that I won't... See, my problem is not what I eat. It's how much I eat, you know, because I chow's down. And my other problem is I'm not active. Ever since I left my job, you know, I haven't been active because my job was very physical the past 30 years. So I've been trying to work on both of those things. As you guys know, I went to the gym twice and I'm starting the last couple meals that I fixed on here. I fixed just a one serving meal. So my food lasts longer because if I buy like one pack of chicken thighs, that's three meals now because I'm only cooking <laughs> enough for one serving. Too much food way too much food let me show you guys what i have in here right quick in terms of meat because i don't need to show y'all everything i bought these big it was four packs i've already eaten one it was four packs of these spicy asian marinated chicken thighs it's one big chicken thigh in each of these packs i fixed one and even that one was a little bit more than what I wanted to eat because again, I'm trying to focus on portion eating. And then on top of that, the Brock is back, baby. The Brock is back. <laughs> on top of that, y'all, look. I have a pack of ground beef. I still have a lot of the roast beef. Portion control, the last pack of the chicken thighs I bought, I cut them up. I had three of these. Thankfully, this is the last one and I'm going to eat this one later on and I'll show you guys what I'm going to do with it. You know, this is, this is way too much food. Maybe I thought the grocery store was gonna shut down or something. I don't know what my mentality was, but this is way, it's going to take me forever to eat these things right here, these chicken thighs right here, because even if I slice them in half, like I said, it's... Ah, man. Potato salad in here from when I bought the. Oh man, now I can't figure out how I had this stuff. <laughs> oh my heavens, get it there. All right. So, I have to work on 
getting this food out here and cooking it. I was gonna cook a lot of it, but then I have nowhere else to put it, even if I cook it, because I don't have space to put like leftovers in the refrigerator. So that's my first little issue that I wanted to share with you guys today. And not to mention, I have a full basket of non-perishable foods in there as well. I don't know what, what is going on with me. <laughs> But I have just been stocking up on food like food is going out of style or something. So that's the first thing I wanted to share with you guys today. Now let me show you guys what I am responsible for this Thanksgiving. Now by responsible, I mean not me actually cooking what's in these bags, but purchasing what's in these bags. bought some candy yams because my mother is going to make some candy yams I bought I bought a ham my mother can't eat a lot of ham she probably only can have like one slice of the salt I bought a big old cabbage boy is this big <laughs> this thing is bigger than my head <laughs> I bought a big cabbage and I like potatoes in my cabbage so we're gonna have some potatoes in the cabbage And I bought two boxes of stovetop stuffing. And the other stuff is just little stuff. I bought like paper plates, uh, spoons, all the things that you need to make the uh, sweet potatoes, the nutmeg, the cinnamon, the vanilla, the brown sugar, all of those things. Then I also bought the cups and forks and those type of things so that we can use. I also bought, I also bought um, some drinks or one jug of drink, uh, juice. Uh, my mother likes uh, lemonade, so she likes the Turkey Hill brand lemonade. So I bought uh, a jug of Turkey Hill lemonade and that's it and then thursday morning i'm going to go over to my mom's house and help her cook i might show a little bit of that i don't know it depends on how comfortable or uncomfortable my mom is but that is it or i just might show me doing my little kitchen thing <laughs> next i wanted to tell you guys i changed the layout of my home just a little bit and the main reason why I changed it I'm gonna show you guys what I did and talk about why I did it it's not you know rocket science or anything like this but the main reason why I changed things around is because I wanted my jackery I wanted my jackery to be by the door because it's easier for me to take this jackery in and out of the van when I have to charge it whether I take it to the library or whether I uh, charge it at the storage facility, it's so much easier. I had it underneath the table. I had to pull it from underneath the table. Then it's a small aisleway. I had to get the handle up, basically stand up as much as I can in the van to lift it because this bad boy is not lightweight. You need to have some leverage to pull this bad boy up and carry it out of the van. Here, I can stand outside of the van and I can grab the handle now and grab it out. I also have a long extension cord up top there that if I didn't want to take it out at the storage facility, I can just run the extension cord out the window in the back of the jackery and plug it up there. So I have two options there. 
but it was important for me to have this jackery by the door to make it much easier because again this bad boy is not lightweight it is heavy you know to be just lugging it around you know and i moved my refrigerator from here to there i turned it around the opposite way as you can see there I put my microwave and my ottoman back behind the passenger seat. It was in the back there. It makes it easier. Now, by doing that, I put my bag that I have my perishable foods in and everything else in, I put that back there, which gave me about seven more inches right here at the entrance. So I moved the table right here. I moved that back seven inches. And now I have a greater space to come in and leave out of the minivan. Also, what that did was it gave me a greater space to utilize my clothes underneath the bed. I have more space to pull those bags from underneath the bed to get my clothes and do that sort of thing with. So yeah, and one other thing that I bought was, I'll show you guys. I bought this best uh, backrest because I was using my pillows, but after a while and then me moving and adjusting, the pillows lose its form and I end up, you know, moving the pillows back and it became uncomfortable after a while. So I went to Walmart and I got this nice, I got this nice backrest and I absolutely love it because I can now sit back, I can sit upright, I have support for my back. That's love, right? Just toss it in the back. <laughs> I love you, I love you. <laughs> I just... <laughs> but yes, I um, had that because when I'm back there, I don't want to be laying down all the time. I need a proper sit-up position and one that supports my back. So that was a good find and a good buy. Ah, oh, man. Next, I had such a great concern of how I was going to keep my Jackery charged during this stay down here in Baltimore. Because the last time I was in Baltimore, the library was closed for um, construction. They were doing some things inside the library. So I was hoping that it was open and I did bring with me, okay, I don't have it right here. I don't have it right here, but I did bring with me my other orange cord, the ones that goes into the cigarette lighter and then in the back of the jackery so if push comes to shove i would just have to charge my jackery up or keep it charged as i'm driving so whenever i'm driving while i'm in baltimore i would just make sure that i have that plugged in and i'm probably only going to gain like three or four watts from one destination to the next because i'm not too far away from everything I'm not too far away from everything. So, but I should have, I had charged it up at 100% before I left. So that's good. It's about, it's at 80% now because I did cook some rice. I wanted to have my rice done for the meal later on today. So, but get this guys, get this. I wasn't sure when the library was going to reopen. I saw the sign when I was last here, but I forgot when they were gonna open. So just out of curiosity, after I came out of the grocery store this morning, I went over to the library, which was across the street, and they are open. Yes, 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 they are open. So now I don't have to be that concerned about charging up the Jackery. I just have to make sure that Wednesday, tomorrow, that this jackery is charged back up to 100% because the library is gonna be closed Thursday and Friday. Now I did buy a little luggage cart. I did buy a little luggage cart. I have it in the back. 
So if I had to take it into the library, I'm not gonna be lugging this bad boy in there because it is, like I said, it's not lightweight, it's heavy. I will be rolling it in here <laughs> in the library <laughs> along with my laptop on there and uh, charging it then. So I will get a good charge on it tomorrow. I have to make sure that the library hours don't change because of the holiday. They might check close a little earlier tomorrow because it's the day before Thanksgiving. So I must keep an eye out on that because I'll be kind of upset if I miss that time and that library closed and I don't get to charge my jackery back up to 100%. So that's very, really important for me to keep an eye out on and make sure that I am in there and charging this jackery back at 100%. Now my jackery, if I'm just running the refrigerator, will last typically three days, maybe four days, because I have been noticing that if just the, with just the fridge on it, it will only use about 21 watts per day. So that should give me at least actually four days, depending on how often the refrigerator comes on. Now, when it was colder, because it seems it's going to be in the 50s now while I'm down here, so the refrigerator may come on a lot often, more often than it did a few days ago when it was like 30 degrees at night and I didn't really hear it come on as much. But yeah, so all good on the Jacquery being charged up here. And what else I wanted to share with you guys? I'm not sure I'm going to have some Thanksgiving footage for you guys because my mother don't want to be on here probably. <laughs> and then my sister is coming over and maybe my younger niece is coming over. You know, we are all older now and my, ne my nephew and my niece, you know, they have their own lives, their own families and stuff. And you know, they're probably going to be spending time with their family so it is what it is we're getting older we live in our lives and you know things aren't what they used to be when we were younger and everybody got together all the time for every holiday but i'm definitely going to stay here until monday i'm gonna take off monday and head back to pa and then i would have about about a week and a half before my Mexico trip next month, December the 6th. I am so excited with a pinch of nervousness. <laughs> As I already mentioned to you guys before, this is my first time leaving out of the country on my own. Um, I told you guys before that I'm not that familiar with the whole money thing. And, you know, when I'm pulling out my wallet, and I exchange my American money for some pesos, you know, am I looking at a $5 bill, a $10 bill, a $1 bill? I don't know. <laughs> the thing is, I went to Cancun, Mexico before, and for the life of me, I told you that I got the money, my friend Richard and I, we got our money transferred over or converted over, and I swear, I felt like they were ripping me off. I do. I swear. Because I'm like, this is what I'm going to be spending, which is more than enough. Boy, that money went so fast. I'm like, uh-uh, something ain't right. Something ain't right. But anyway, hopefully I will educate myself a little better this time. Learn some couple things. Have my little translator on my phone. So if I have to get something translated, I will. But I'm going to do a little bit of research and hopefully I won't feel as nervous. That's the only really nervous part, nervous part that I have about this trip is the, the whole money situation. I'm not nervous of going over there because it's a tourist uh, spot where I'm going, Mazalan, uh, Mexico, it's touristy, you know, so I'm not worried about that. I'm used to, and that's what I like about my traveling the most is that I'm a touristy kind of guy. I like to go around the city or wherever I am to see, you know, the whereabouts and stuff like that. I'm definitely not the type of person that goes off the beaten path and, and do all the off the beaten path excursions and stuff like that. That's not me. That's not me because I'm a scaredy cat. Because, you know, all I'd be thinking of, ain't nobody going to kidnap me or... <laughs> 
I'm serious. I stay, I stay right there where everything is. And you know, sometimes people say, well, that's when you find the best this, the best that. Okay, unless a group of people is standing there along with me, and I still may not do it there because they can kidnap a whole group of us. <laughs> I try not to be paranoid, but you know, this is unfamiliar territory for me. I have to keep my safety in mind first and foremost. But I am super, super excited. It's been a long time since I have been on an airplane, probably way since before COVID, probably about three years. So I hope my ears don't pop like I, it's my first uh, flight. Because you know how that is, that's not a good feeling. But hopefully I will be okay. But yeah, super excited about the trip. I hope, oh, excuse me. I hope that it inspires me to sign up to go to other trips, other places, other foreign countries and everything because I'm ready. I'm ready to get out there, see some of the world, see a lot of the world, as much of it as I can. And it's gonna be a lot of on the airplane type of trips in between my camping trips when my camping season start next year in May, starting with the campground up in PA. Because as I mentioned to you guys before, I'm going to be spending two weeks out of each month, May through August at the campground. The other two weeks of that month, I'm going to be traveling somewhere, whether it's a road trip, whether it's a get on a plane type of trip. Now I am going to mix that up with some stay at home type of time to meaning stay in PA, hang out in PA, or come down back down to Baltimore, hang out in Baltimore. So that's the way that that is going to work for me. That's my schedule. Now I have to figure out from October, because I'm going to be in Baltimore in September. My nephew is getting married um, next September. So I'll be in uh, Baltimore next year in September. But after September, um, I'm off and running. I don't think I'm coming back down south during September and October because it's like hurricane or tornado season and that type of stuff. And I'm not trying to be up in that. Not trying to be up in that. I remember Michael told me on a road trip, he called me and said, when we were in Dallas, he called me and said, oh, it's a tornado warning. Go in the house and get in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I'm about to get the hell out of here. I'm about to go up and get in my car and, and make a beeline back to Baltimore, PA. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was like, oh no, shoot. Please don't tell me that. But it was just rain, thankfully. But yeah, I thought that was like a little bit funny after the fact. But when he was telling me, I was like, uh-uh. I don't see how people can live here if there's tornadoes and stuff going on. But anywho, <clears throat> anywho, that is that. Um, I'm thinking that I'm going to put together a really, really special video for you guys while I'm in Baltimore. I won't tell you guys what it is. Hopefully, I will not be lazy and I will take the time and get this video together for you guys because I think it is a video that you will really enjoy especially if you have been around and especially if you have gotten to know me throughout the years I think you will really appreciate this type of video but anywho I think that's it I think we are done for today <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friends, as always, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your days to watch my videos. I appreciate you guys. You know that. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving if I don't get to see and talk to you guys beforehand. But have a great Thanksgiving. And don't forget, count your blessings. <laughs> and I'll see you guys the next time.